do something if I cannot do it really in an ideal sense. So at least uh, half my land will be turned into a cover crop because that gets rid of the white grubs for mm -hmm. one thing and also it definitely improves the land. I do believe, I, I don't uh, believe in no deal. Well, um, for crying out loud, I'm purchasing a lot of deal. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, um, uh, the, the main problem with dealing the, the, the earth normally is the weight of the tractor. So it's not so much that you break down the, the, uh, the, the, the soil. But, so I'm trying to find a happy place between one thing and another. What will I do with my white grubs that is safe and, of course, legal? That's very important. Mm -hmm. I, um, it doesn't do well for a uh, Texas rebel to show up in New Hampshire and uh, break the law. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you plan so on doing mulching of any sort? Oh yeah, of course. What do you but plan on using? I don't have Right, right now I don't have any. I'm going to be planting veg. Veg. Um, are you familiar with V E C T H? I am. Oh, V V V T C H. Yes, yep. veg. So I I like veg. I like veg, and again, it's something that I learned when I was an agriculture engineering student. I learned about, uh, but I couldn't do it in our land because uh, it needs water. And here I am going to be having my own water. So everything should work. So I'm <laughs> <laughs> Water is central to it all. I think you're absolutely right about that. And it is. And then you have the issues of having too much. So I have my uh, plan B, which is uh, uh, high tunnels. But you don't currently have high tunnels. No, I don't. I don't. And the high tunnels uh, would be yeah. for which crops? Well, uh, for, the, for the strawberries. For the strawberries. Um, I'm yes, yes. They, they, they are very happy with high tunnels, except with the problem of excessive heat. But one problem at a time, as my dad <laughs> uh, Is there anything else about your growing practices or your strategy in that area uh, that we haven't talked about yet that you'd like to share before I switch gears a little bit? Uh, not, not really. I mean... Um, Dealing the earth, keeping it properly water. Uh, I mentioned uh, uh, drip uh, irrigation. Yeah. I do believe in drip irrigation. It works very well. I um, so uh, yeah. Well, a, a little uh, side detail, a little bit of uh, personal pride. Uh, because of my background in electronics, uh, I do intend to have automated systems if I go the high tunnels route. Nice. Uh, to have automated systems for uh, the ventilation. Mm, yeah. But oh, I dream of that. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not, not quite yet, and of course I would want to avoid, one, the expense, and two, extremely important, the time sink that any kind of creative project can become. Oof. I hear that, that's for sure. Okay. Uh, so I'm hoping we can talk now about... Um, uh, finances and some of the financial pictures of, of, uh, of what you have going on and what you're planning. Um, so the first one is I'm just wondering if um, your farm business is uh, incorporated in any way. Like is it an LLC or is it just, uh, are you just working as a sole proprietor or a general partnership right now? Okay, uh, sole proprietor and uh, that probably until, until I have to get acreage. Until you get more acreage, gotcha. And um, can, can you talk to me about, like, what other income streams you have coming into the household and how you plan on balancing that with farm income in the future? Yes. Okay, so um, the, uh, how, how do I say, no, it's not spiritual, the philosophical, the philosophical background of things is that uh, I grew up um, as, as uh, with the Hispanic mindset. And for a Hispanic person, the man earns money for the household and the woman stays at home. That was not the case for my parents. <laughs> <laughs> my parents were, were both uh, employed as much as they could because they really cared about giving us kids, me and my sister, the best education. 
television record. That was the big focus mm -hmm. for them, and it wasn't cheap. And uh, so, uh, but uh, I had that mindset, and alas, my dear friend, I, I have never been able to achieve it. Mm. So circumstances have been such that I have married a very hard-working person who actually has continuous employment and as a family we have depended on that income. Mm -hmm. But I have never been happy about it because that's just not the way it should be. Now you can laugh it off in so many ways, but you can understand and, and you have had, I've, I've seen that you, you have worked with people from other countries, you have the culture that you have and you have to deal with your own phantoms and whatnot and mm. uh, this is one that has always been a problem. So I have always tried to somehow achieve an income and essentially failed at that. A lot of that has to do with the fact that I have terrible people skills. I tend to tell people what they need to hear and um, believe it or not, I, people are not very thankful about that. Even though that's oftentimes so, the most important thing. Yeah, so my employment has been splotchy and uh, the best income I have made so far has been coding. I am a pretty good computer coder, if I may say so myself. <laughs> and uh, when I have been able to uh, have somebody hire me, um, we have all been happy, but I am very bad at selling, I'm terrible at selling, I'm horrible, I'm, I'm useless. So when it comes to trying to get the contract work and so on, I essentially have failed. So then I have tried this and that other business. Bottom line, as soon as possible, I hope that my farm uh, work will make us uh, solvent. But meanwhile, I have to depend on my wife's income. Mm -hmm. So, and that's my sad, sad story, and for uh, someone from Bolivia, it's embarrassing, it's shameful. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that must be a lot to have on your shoulders. Uh, yep, yep. Uh, and um, my, by, the, by the grace of God, my wife uh, has accepted this state of things without complaining too much. <laughs> but she also wishes that we had an income, of course. <laughs> don't we all? If you're because we don't have kids, we can live in one, uh, on one income. I see. Mostly okay. Yeah. If you feel comfortable sharing, can you tell me about how much um, she's making and what she does for work? Well, uh, she used to make more than she's making now because uh, she essentially has been what's that word uh, for for uh, not uh, not uh, uh, not fired but for furloughed uh, that one mm -hmm. yeah uh, with all with uh, all things that have been going so nowadays uh, nowadays she depends on uh, on contract work and whatever part time uh, work she gets so our uh, income right now will be about 70 I believe mm -hmm. and what is she doing for work uh, data, data data science she is an amazing uh, analyst of data very interesting cool and do you and uh, your household have any significant debts not at this moment we are afraid on what will happen now that we have two houses. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to ask, what about the land? Do you um, do you own the land outright? Do you have a mortgage or some other well, scenario? Uh, yeah, th this, is, uh, this is one thing that I want you to sort of come and go with uh, other information and not uh, uh, quote me. But yes, we do own uh, the land, yes. Okay, so you're not paying a mortgage on it right now? Nope. Right, so at least there's that weight we, off the shoulders. We, we had, we had, um, we we just have been frugal for many years, which is another advantage of being Bolivian. <laughs> and when this came about, well, we are still sort of reeling of the shock because that meant putting our savings like into something as crazy as a second house. <laughs> yeah, we're still trying to figure things out. And by by second house, do you mean your first house? Do you have one in Austin? Correct. And is someone renting that out or something while you're gone? We're trying to get that figured out and it's so complicated. 18 years here, you wouldn't believe how much junk I'm pulling from everything.